all I'm doing is uh, following on from when we did the oil leak up here uh, be behind the top timing chain cover or around it and today uh, I'm going to change the distributor cap and the uh, rotor button and everything down here uh, because when I did that job I realised they were worn out okay so now what I'm going to do is take this top cover off and we'll go through the routine again three uh, five mil allen head uh, screws hold the distributor cap on and one here and one there and one down the bottom the one down the bottom I use a smaller allen uh, key to undo and I put the socket on the end of it just for the leverage to get it unscrewed and once it's going it's fine it's just got to muck around I get the light there and put it on the other side and get my head down there and I can see what I'm doing here we go another little thing to note here you'll notice that the blades are all evenly spaced except for here where it's just slightly wider which allows you to put your key in a bit easier not much now this is the old uh, distributor cap I've just slipped it out of the way and here's a new one and on the new one see that bit of carbon that goes down from the coil onto the rotor button and look at the one down here it's jammed back down in there it's, uh, so it would be arcing back down to the rotor button there's a new one the uh, outer shield here with the holes in it as you can see it's damaged and everything so I'm going to put a new outer shield on mine well new everything actually so anyway I'll just kick that out of the way and uh, now I'll undo the three screws that hold the rotor button these are little allen head screws and they're uh, three uh, millimeter Rightio, I just removed this uh, screw out of the, the flange here from the camshaft which goes to the rotor button uh, that's a 40 T40 Torx bit fits it now I'm going to pull this piece off the camshaft there's a little uh, key on the camshaft that this slides onto yeah a little bit of a struggle to get the adapter off that goes from the camshaft to the rotor button but if you look at mine see there's a crack there yeah which wouldn't be helping and that's why I was pulling it off to change it next is this uh, rear plastic insulation flange and you can see mine's chewed up <laughs> the scratch marks around there with me getting that uh, flange off the, the adapter but I'll show you the new one as you can see the new one is not as chewed up as the old one and the good news about this is there is no oil leaks around the base here on the sides of the uh, top of the uh, timing chain cover since I <coughs> resealed it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out the oil seal and replace it because uh, I didn't replace it uh, when I changed that seal with the new seal just put a bit of oil around the inner and outer sides of it uh, to help it uh, go in and when you tap it in just tap it flush don't tap it in any further than flush okay now I'm just going to put these parts uh, back together and uh, we'll carry on from there and here as usual we have a dilemma uh, the height of this old uh, adapter is taller than the new one now I don't know if this means anything the slot's shallower on this one and the slot is longer on this one 
I'll try and put them together so you can get the what I'm trying to say here. So one is longer than the other. <coughs> so I'm going to try the new one. Uh, it seems to click on the slot and uh, tighten it up and see what happens. No, I have been given the wrong part. The bolt won't go through the hole. So uh, I have to put the old one back on. What a pain in the bloody ass. There are two different types of adapters for this uh, rotor button here from the camshaft. Uh, one's the alloy, which is uh, 22 diameter, which is this one. And the other one is 20 millimeter diameter, and that's uh, steel. And that's the one I got sent. And I've just been running around looking for one, and I can't find one. So what I've got to do is put the car back together as is, and order one in, and guess what? Do it again. Well, I've put my new cover over my new distributor cap and even put a, a washer rubber o ring in there. And uh, now I'm going to take the bolts off this one and put this one over the rotor button. Okay, all I've got to do now is transfer the spark plug leads over to the new distributor cap put the cover back on and that's it. It's very annoying because uh, having to come back, I'm going to have to come back and change that uh, camshaft adapter once I get a new one. What a bummer. Okay, that's it for today. Well, here we are and it's uh, five days later. I managed to uh, get a new, well, not new, a second hand, but in good condition adapter from the camshaft that goes to the uh, rotor button. I uh, tried every one in Sydney, uh, in New South Wales, and uh, couldn't find one, and I managed to get this one from Merkbits down in Melbourne, in Victoria. Fair price and really fast delivery. So I recommend Merkbits. And uh, talking about parts, all the parts that I put in there come from Pelican Parts in America. When I buy the parts, I try to get everything I can possibly think of. I'll give you an example. I order these uh, windshield wiper blades, they're 19 inch refills for the wiper blades on my 450. A while ago, last May, uh, it was pouring rain and uh, the wipers were really bad. So I went to uh, Super Cheap Autos, Auto Barn and Repco trying to uh, get the same wipers. The trouble is the uh, thickness up here, I think they're 10 mil or less uh, on the rubbers, is uh, not available. I went through all the charts at Repco and everything. In the end, I had to go to Silver Star, Silver Star Spares. There's a receipt here, down in um, Kingsgrove or wherever it is, in Australia of course. Now this is my receipt from Pelican Parts. The uh, wiper blades here, uh, $6, that's $12 for a pair. And okay, allow 25% exchange rate, so that's $15. And here we are, Silver Star Spares. And here's the grand total for a pair, $77 Australian. Is that what you call uh, extortionate or just a highway robbery or what we call a plain ripoff? Now Pelican Parts at $15 is, uh, they're not a charity, they are making money so just say it cost two dollars each <laughs> the actual cost was four uh, and they're selling for 12 fair enough but with this bloody lot uh, this is Australia the land of the ripoff we pay two to three times more for everything than anywhere else in the world and uh, and the corruption here is 
my, you know, is amazing. Uh, this goes for supermarkets, petrol, banks, the government, uh, councils, state and federal. Uh, they're all corrupt and uh, we have to live with this. Like I say, a 50 gram pouch of tobacco for me costs near $70 Australian. The rest of the world about 12 and that's my gripe for today. And this is why we buy our parts overseas when we can. It was just that I couldn't, I had to buy the bloody wiper blades because it was uh, uh, needed. Now back to the 300E. When I did this stuff for a while back, uh, we, the car would start the first turn of the key, it would warm up beautifully and then idle with real rough. And 90% uh, of the time, I know, it's a vacuum leak. And so I was checking the uh, vacuum pipes around the place. There's a few of them. Oh, we'll try and find them uh, down here, and they run up to here and all this sort of stuff. And I couldn't see anything wrong with them, but I noticed the smell of petrol coming out of the... Uh, fuel pressure regulator and what it was it was leaking petrol at the back here and into the vacuum pipe that goes up into the air filter and uh, so I knew obviously the diaphragm inside's no good so I changed it I didn't bother doing a movie on the subject because it's not rocket science just uh, take the pressure off catch as much fuel as you can and undo the fuel lines and change it and, and uh, of course it didn't make any difference, I still had a rough idle and uh, I was scratching my head and going why would this be? And then I realised that the vacuum line that goes out of the rocket cover down in the, uh, to the intake manifold the, uh, was just sitting on the intake manifold area here and all I had to do was push it back down and now the car runs lovely again. So. There you go. If you ever got a problem, it's always something simple. And nine out of ten, if you've got a rough idle with the engine warmed up and everything else is fine, it will be a vacuum leak. Okay, that's all for this little show. Bye.